It's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. It's time to babble the f*** on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. And you're just lovely. Look at all of you. No, oh, wait a minute. We're, we're on video tonight, aren't we? There are cameras this evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we shoot the show sometimes, uh, but uh, this time we're shooting the show for a YouTube channel called Loud. Did anybody see the Iron Man 3 footage? Yeah? It Good was stuff. compulsory to nut your drawers. It was just... It was so f- I don't want to spoil it, but I will. The Mandarin is in the movie, man. They went there, huh? Is that uh, Ben Kingsley? Is it is Ben Sir Kingsley. Ben, Sir Ben, as yes. we call him? Yes, when they hired him, they were like, he's not the Mandarin. And then you watch the piece that they put together, and at the end, you see the rings and shit, and they pull oh. back, and he's decked out. And I was like, ah, skeet, skeet, skeet. <laughs> and then I tried to catch my own ski. It was like, oh, come on. That's how good it was, man. But uh, it was awesome. You get to watch it with that many people. It was like 6,000 people yeah, sure. all reacting to like the same kind of key moments. And when the Mandarin thing happened, that room, everyone in that room knew what that meant, who that was. And everyone was like, wow. If you'd shown it anyplace else, you wouldn't have had this cathartic reaction. But since everybody sitting in that room was like, I know now that Ben Kingsley is the Mandarin, it, there was this really cathartic, like, ah. It was awesome. And, and all right. It, Let's get to the, some shout-outs. People have come particularly long distances to uh, celebrating special occasions. We like to celebrate with a segment we call, ironically, shout-outs. How about Michael and Joe from Chesterfield, England? Welcome, fellas. We are two straight guys, they write. <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. And for the past five years, because our friends are either boring or poor, we've been vacationing together, just the two of us. We're pretty sure that, despite the girlfriends over the years, our friends and family think we're a pair of raging homosexuals (laughs) and are currently enjoying our annual gay cruise. (laughs) I'm happy to report that in the nine years we've known each other, neither of us has penetrated the other. Well, congratulations. We were hoping to enroll the help of a shining beacon of masculinity, such as Ed Wynn, to put these rumors to rest. (laughs) Thanks for the laughs. Keep up the good work. P.S. Either of us will suck a dick for a shout-out. Well, (laughs) see, you're not helping the situation with that kind of talk. Well, they didn't say they'd suck each other's dicks. Just just a dick. That shit's just platonic between them. Oh, my goodness. I know how it is when people think you're gay and you're not, don't you know? For some reason, my whole life, people have said to me, Ed... Do you like cock? And I say, oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm gay, though. A lot of straight guys love cock. Right, Kevin? <laughs> Indeed, man. I'm just a fan of the idea of it, the concept, the theory of cock. Me too. <laughs> Let's blow each other. <laughs> Let's take a look at the week's news with the HBO headlines. Congratulations to Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes. They officially reached a divorce settlement this week. That was fast. Really fast, man. It, life should, uh, we should all kind of solve our issues and problems in life. We should fast, all get divorced know? very quickly. Yeah, and do it as civilly and whatnot. That yeah. was quick. I was looking forward to some juice and some dirt, but they got rid of that shit quick. Don't you think that's why it was so quick? That both of them were like, we, all got, we got all kinds of shit on each other. Let's not talk about it in public. Clearly, she's concerned about her kids. So I think yes. for her, she was like, as long as I'm over here and you're there and I can take care of the kid and make sure she doesn't go to the weird Scientology camp, then I'm happy. That was the She kept saying, she's like, I don't want his money. She said it from day one. She's right. like, she has her own money. She's built her own companies and stuff. Like, she's a successful woman, so she ain't in it for the cash. Obviously, she cares a lot about her f-ing daughter, enough to like almost do what sounds like someone fleeing in the night. Yeah. Like, he was out of the country, and she had to arrange a safe house and shit like that. She had, that. like, burner cell phones and stuff. I mean, it was a total Mission Impossible to get out of there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> File. Wow, and that's how it's going to be? <laughs> she obviously did not go into this relationship with her eyes wide shut. I mean, uh... she... I think she made all the right moves here, quite frankly. <laughs> She managed Ralph. to escape the marriage without any collateral damage, and <laughs> Ralph, when she hired the firm that she <laughs> used. Stop it! Stop it! They this were, shit is risky business. <laughs> it's 
nice they avoided a, a war of the worlds, I think, that, that these two would be battling together. I think it's, it's very convenient. Well, it, it was quick. It was way quick. Yeah. But good for them. They got their shit done, and, and it looks like they're looking out for the kid. But man, they showed some f***ing footage of this place that she was supposed to go, like this camp in the middle of nowhere where they like built a city in the desert. And they had like, uh, they, they were like, you know, look, all of these new buildings, beautiful campus, but they were like, what's this? And it was a picture of like a f***ing, uh, I don't know what they call it, like a makeshift crow's nest or whatever. And it had camouflage over it. Like it was a sniper rifle point. Oh, jeez. So, and I'm like, why the f*** would a religion need some sniper rifles? Look, when Xenu comes back, you're going to want that crow's nest. But part of the deal, apparently, of the divorce is that neither one of them can preach to the kid religion one way or the other at this point. So when the kid asked, why did you guys get divorced, you can't tell her. Because you can't say it's because of religion. Whose religion? Daddy's religion. Why? Because it's fucking weird. <laughs> no, you can't say that. <laughs> uh, Bill Murray fans were very excited this week by the story that Bill was doing a uh, party crashing tour of the United States this summer. A story was released that Bill Murray was going to travel from city to city all over the country, crashing people's parties and seeing if he could stay at their house. That's he crashed genius. a karaoke event in New York City, and apparently that's what set this off. Uh, there was a, a big story about it. A lot of the news agencies picked it up. It said, Bill will crash your party if you hang a sign outside your house that says, Bill Murray can crash here. He will drive around and find it and come to your party. He will stay on your couch or in a spare bedroom. Both are completely acceptable. <laughs> Mr. Murray would, was, does not want to be called Bill Murray at the event, but would like to be referred to as Kaiser Soze. <laughs> The Bill Murray Party Crashing Tour will kick off August 1st in Phoenix, Arizona and end September 10th in Austin, Texas. More cities to be announced later. If you have, for more information, call the Bill Murray Party Crashing Tour hotline. Several news agencies picked up this story. It turned out it was just a massive hoax that someone posted no! on the internet. No! Oh my God, I was like, this is the coolest thing I that know, ever happened, right? man. It was listed by a, uh, a website called superofficialnews.com. You should know with a name like superofficialnews.com, it was going to be a hoax. And it turns out the number they gave out for the party crashing tour hotline is actually the number for the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> That's awesome. That is a great hoax on every level. Music news. This is fascinating music news. Mick Jagger and David Bowie were bisexual lovers. That's not news. That's everybody, hot. But everybody knew that, no? They did, but now it's confirmed in a book called Mick, The Wildlife and Mad Genius of Jagger. The, uh, the story is a backup dancer said in 1973, as far back as, as 1973, she would share a bed with Mick and David at the same time. Her name's Ava Cherry. She said they were much more interested in each other than me. She says in the book, Baby Jealous. Buell, mother of actress Liv Tyler, yeah, 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 said that Mick and David would call her in the middle of the night asking her to join them and four black men. That sounds delicious. Mick, David, <laughs> four black guys, and her. I guess just to mix it up, you throw a vagina in the mix, just to, just to, you know, just to break up all the black cock. Or you could just be like, hey man, it ain't gay if there's a girl here. That's right. <laughs> Now, David Bowie is famously uh, reclusive and retired, but we did reach out to Mr. Bowie to see if he had a statement. And apparently he did send us one. This is what uh, David Bowie had to say. I've tasted Mick Jagger's penis. I've tasted Mick Jagger's penis. I've eaten Mick Jagger's asshole. I've tasted Mick Jagger's penis. I've had sex with Mick Jagger, bisexual sex with Jagger. Sometimes there are four big black men, sometimes it's just a big black dancer. I had sex with Mick Jagger, I often had sex with Miss Jagger. I've had sex with Mick Jagger. <laughs> Easy, Chewy. Enough dick suckery. Let's talk about a very, very important cock, Ralph. Shall we? Shall, Shall we? Shall we? we ask the eternal musical question, how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Here is uh, this week's best Liam Neeson cock facts. Liam Neeson's cock is so big... 
It actually kidnaps Liam Neeson in Taken 2. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? For John Travolta, it puts the sigh in Scientology. <laughs> <sighs> so weird, it's so big. <laughs> it's like I want to massage it. It's so weird. <laughs> And lastly, and along those lines, Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that his Comic-Con panel was held in Hall H. I, J, and K. <laughs> Haven't we all at some point in the evening settled for a bag of crack? Yes. You are interested in DTF. I don't know what DTF is. You're interested. I'm gonna guess it's out of habit because it doesn't itch a fidget and I'm switching my position to my wedders on my left butt cheek. Piss because I know my stupid phone is gonna ring again and I wanna.